Next tonight, with his keen sense of smell, Trio the Labrador is a true war hero. Yep, trained at the military dog unit in Rutland, he saved dozens of lives after detecting improvised explosive devices while working in Afghanistan. So today he joined a very select group to be awarded what's the canine equivalent of the Victoria Cross. Kate Prout went along to meet him. A dog of war, a canine with an uncanny nose for explosives. Trio the Black Lab is a four-legged metal detector and is no stranger to danger. Basically, we were at the forefront of the patrols to make sure that there's nothing in the, in the ground ready uh, to basically kill or maim the patrol behind us. Uh, and basically, Trio uh, was sent in by me uh, because of, we thought that there was danger there. Uh, unfortunately f enough for me that Trio found the devices. Now retired, Trio and his handler worked with the 104 Military Working Dog Support Unit in Rutland for five years. All this media attention and being in the spotlight is a far cry from Trio's day job, sniffing out unexploded devices in Afghanistan. Today's scrum at the Imperial War Museum in London was more of a metaphorical minefield, and Trio kept a clear head and a tennis ball at all times. Created by the animal charity PDSA in 1942, the medal honours gallantry in war. And Trio is just the latest recipient of the Dickin Medal. Other recipients have included 26 other dogs, 32 World War II messenger pigeons, three horses and a cat. What's impressive for me as a vet is you see that bond between the handler and his, uh, uh, the pet. It's just like a kind of a team that works together. It's not individuals, and I think that's particularly inspiring when you see the way that animals can help people, and he's saved so many lives, really. At the grand old age of eight, Trio is looking forward to a life of retirement as a family pet. And if Dave is ever struggling to find the remote control, well, he knows who to send him. Kate Prout. Anglia News, London. Just lovely. Amazing work We've as been well. doing a bit of work on the Dickin medal, actually, haven't we? You've we got, have, believe it or not. I have indeed. Uh, Simon the Cat, not exactly name. a very uh, military name there, yeah. apparently was a rat catcher right. on the HMS Amethyst when it was stranded in the Yangtze River in China and got the medal for catching rats. Well done for that. As well, the do. first winner of the Dickin medal was actually called Winky the Pigeon. Now, Winky <laughs> the Pigeon flew from a crash bomber to get help 120 miles to get help and uh, managed to do so. It's pretty good stuff, isn't I mean, it? Where do you put your medal, though, if you're a pigeon? I don't know, in your pigeon bag in or your something, bag I somewhere. suppose, yeah. <laughs> well, next tonight, plenty of you may have seen Avatar. Yeah, it's the most expensive film ever made. The computer-generated 3D sci-fi spectacular. Well, things have certainly come a long way, as you can see from that. But uh, <laughs> you probably don't appreciate just how far until you look at the first colour films from more than 100 years ago. Well, now, two film buffs who are from Suffolk are giving people there, and us, of course, a mm. chance to do just that. Natalie Gray has this report. You don't have to be a film buff to appreciate the magic of these movies. This one, called Kingdom of the Fairies, is from 1903 and is a black and white film coloured by hand. This is the first time it's been seen in public for more than a century. Our hosts are David Cleveland and Nigel Lister. What they don't know about films, frankly, isn't worth knowing. Each frame is painted, and when you look at it, you'll see only bits are painted. They just did the, the sort of important bits, and they're usually bright colours, and the colours are almost exactly the same as in the Magic Lantern slides, which, of course, go back to Victorian and even earlier uh, periods. It's just the same system, adding painted colours to the uh, image. Now, those of you of a certain age, like me, may remember David as the prof in the children's programme Vision On in the 70s. And if you thought the plasticine figure morph from those days was impressive, then look at this film from 1908 called Modern Sculptors. It's one of the earliest animation films and comes nearly 100 years before Wallace and Gromit. That is coloured as well. That's done by a stencil process where colour was mechanically applied to every black and white print that went to the uh, projector and was shown. The hand-turned projector is an urnaman and is as old as the films. The films were sometimes a bit too realistic for some cinema goers. The Lumiere brothers, they, they actually filmed a train coming through a station, I think it was 1903, in, in 3D. 
And it was so authentic that a lot of the audience ran out of the theatre, scared, because there's a train coming out of the screen. If you'd like to see more of these fabulous films, then there's a special screening at Chelmerdiston Village Hall on March the 6th at 7.30. You might like to dress up. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Chelmerdiston, near Ipswich. How extraordinary. I had no idea that every single frame was painted. Incredible, isn't it? We're not painted, are we? Not dead, no, we? not, no, this not is at the moment. No, yeah, afraid so. <laughs> anyway, here's what to expect on the national news in just a couple of minutes' time. Well, and I see that Trio is getting so much recognition. You never isn't get it? enough of Trio. No, can it's you? brilliant. It'll well, let's <laughs> well, let's have a look at what's coming up in the weather with uh, Amanda Houston. I wish a bit like those early films we could paint just the odd bit of colour on the weather at the be moment. Be nice, wouldn't it? A bit of sun, perhaps, or something <laughs> would be nice, wouldn't it? Good day to stay in and watch films, though. I say, <laughs> hope to see you tomorrow. We'll bye see bye. You then. Goodbye.